Right then guys, I finished my 4F Phantom and I decided to get back to doing a bit more sci-fi so I'm going to be doing the 12500 scale Enterprise B I just empty the parts up and I'm going to be doing a lighting job on it so it's going to be it's not going to be fully lit um, I might be able to get a couple of nav lights into the saucer because it's quite a bit of space not quite a bit <laughs> it's tiny but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these parts and it's not many it's going to be a quick build, it's mainly going to be decaling or decaling um, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is to start removing the parts off the trees and then I'm going to give them a wash and then I'm going to light proof from the outside it's pretty much going to be lit using um, a Raytheon technique where I light block the outside put the lights on the inside and then just scrape away the bits of paint that I don't need for the light blocking okay let's get them make a start uh, I think I'm cutting the main sprue off with the cutters Roll your fingers. And the rest will be taken off with the knife. Now, that one's going to need a bit of clean up. There's a lot of flashing on this part. So I'm going to take that off with the Exacto blade. Um, but yeah, um, I'll carry on doing that, and then I'll come back after the parts are washed. Okay, so I've washed the uh, model parts. They're here drying. Um, I've just got them laid out on some kitchen towel. Uh, I've done a test fit before I washed the parts and it seems that I don't think, I might be able to put nav lights in but I don't think they'll be running because there's really not that sort of space inside so I, the reason being is that it's not, it's not really that it's small, it's the way it fits together is inside the B there's a little ridge that runs all the way around and that's where the bottom half of the saucer this rim sits in and unfortunately let's line it up when that squeezes in it actually fills the space where the nav lights need to go so I suppose Bores it could be drilled out. Um, but I think what I'll do, I think I'll have the nav lights lit, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make them flash. Well, I suppose I could, but. Mm, no. Anyway, I'm going to give these a little bit of a wipe over now. I've left the nacelles on the sprue and the smaller parts as well because I really don't need those for now um, so yeah uh, the next thing to do once these parts are dry 
is to mask off all the bits that I don't need or the bits I want to keep for lighting such as the inside of the saucer on both sides and then to light block it so come back when that's done okay so I've got some of the principal masking done to protect the inside of the saucer uh, so that when I light block it there's uh, no paint gets on the inside and the same with the bottom of the saucer because I want the lights to come through and here now I'm only going to be giving it a principal light block in just because it's easier to uh, handle where the parts are in pieces uh, eventually I'm going to put all the lights in build it and then give it its final light block and then uh, start giving it its paint job now for the lighting for the nacelles because the pylons to the nacelles are so thin uh, I'm not going to be able to get an LED into the nacelles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve a little channel, I'm going to drill through here uh, yeah. and then I'm going to carve a little channel right up here and up into the nacelle and I'm going to be running one of these which is uh, a 12 volt we can, well, it says 12, I'm going to be running it at 9 uh, SMD and it will sit in the front of the nacelle and there you go it's on thin very thin magnet wire so it doesn't need to be a massive channel that I've got to carve down, it's only going to be very very tiny but that'll, that'll run up the pylon and into the front of the nacelles uh, oops, that nearly came off and it's going to be supplying the light Ooh, that's still a bit wet to illuminate the front end like so so that's going to work out really well. So I'm going to carry on with the light blocking. Now I'm going to take these parts and I'm going to light block them now and then start soldering up because this, this saucer is going to require, um, even though it's a very small model, the saucer is going to require at least seven LEDs. So it's going to need one there, there, one in the middle, and then one, two, three, four to light the windows. Uh, the one in the middle will be doing any bridge lights, and the um, should be bright enough in here to really light these two little domes here as well. Um, it'll also be doing the underside light in for the registry. Uh, so that's seven just in the saucer and then we've got one which will be pointing down which should light the deflector and these forward windows here and then we'll have one here just behind the deflector pointing back which should light all these here and then I'm going to put another SMD in the back to light these windows here so uh, yeah, so the next thing to do now is to light block it, prim primary light block it, and then start soldering up all the parts, all the wires and cables and everything, and try to make it as neat as possible, and so it fits into that very small space. 
and then build it and then give it its final lip lock. So, see you soon. Right then, uh, back after doing some primary light leaking. Um, one of the things that I had to do, uh, I didn't have any black paint here to uh, put into the airbrush. And I know, I know, I can hear Steve Neal right now going, you don't have to use black, you can use grey, you can use... It's opaque. And I know, I know, I know, but I just feel more comfortable using black. Um, and I wanted to put it into the airbrush because this model has some fine details on it that um, if I just use the rattle can, uh, these can be a little bit unpredictable. Um, sometimes they can put on blobs of paint, sometimes they can go on too thin, sometimes they can spatter. Um, so I prefer to use the airbrush and I, I can get a finer coat. So what I did, uh, this is a Carplan Automotive Acrylic. Um, spray. So what I done was I sprayed it into the cap. I then uh, took an old Tamiya pot, uh, put about a fifth of X20A thinner in there, and then poured the black into there, and then it thinned it enough to use for the airbrush. And then I went over it, right over it, into all these little cracks and all these little gaps, just to make sure that it is thoroughly light leaked. And I believe, I think it is, um, I've got a, an LED here. And I need a power supply for it. So I've got these little battery packs. Let's try and clip this in. And I can test to see how light proof. Uh, it's not bad. It needs it needs a little bit more. But I'll worry about that when it comes to um, the actual build. It's got to have another coat, but that's not bad. Um, light leaking is all, obviously, you can see in the seams there, but it just glows. Um, round the seams, that's always the worst part for light leaking. Any indentation or any edge uh, is going to cause problems. Uh, you can see the star drive still needs a bit. Uh, the other side's not too bad. The other side's actually a little bit better, but it still needs it still needs more. You can see the the light coming straight through it. Um, so that's not bad. It's not bad. It's good enough to start the build. So yeah, there we are. There's there's that part done. Uh, for the warp engines, because the bussards are right at the front there, and it's in two halves, I'm going to have to put the uh, two pieces together with the light already locked inside it, the wires coming out. Uh, I'll use some latex liquid mask and just cover the front and then go over it then with the airbrush and light block it. And then I can peel it off, tint it blue and we should be good to go so that's the next thing to do um, that's pretty much it for um, today's part of the build so I'll uh, post up another video soon